This episode is a special Halloween edition of Toys I Wish I Had as a Kid. So, stick around. friends and welcome to Days of Dorker Past. My name is Rob and in this episode we're going to take a look at some toys I wish I had as a kid. This will be a Halloween edition which doesn't vary that much from a normal episode of Toys I Wish I Had as a Kid because in those I talk about monster toys quite a bit. Only this time there's going to be more of an emphasis on monster toys. Without further ado, let's get to the first toy on the list, and that is the Rancor Monster from Return of the Jedi. Released by Kenner in 1983, the Rancor Monster was the biggest monster toy released in the Star Wars line. It towered over the Wampa from Empire Strikes Back, and it was awesome. He had a movable jaw, which in theory, was not big enough to eat any of your action figures, but you could kind of reenact this scene. As the commercial showed for the toy, you could definitely reenact the Luke shoving a bone in its mouth scene and... I guess you could drop something on it and reenact that scene too. <laughs> but anyway, it had large open claws that were to hold the action figures, but it wasn't the best at holding. See, I never had one of course, but I had a friend that had one, and we would play with it for hours. It worked great. For Star Wars, for G.I. Joe, for anything. The Rancor was just a big, awesome monster that could attack and try to eat any of your action figures. If I'm remembering correctly, it was priced pretty high. So, maybe that's the reason I never got it as a kid. But, man, again, it's one of those toys that I wish I had on my shelf today. There are more recent releases of it, and of course those are astronomically expensive as well. Of course when you get into the Black Series, yeah, way expensive. You're better off just hunting for the vintage figure, monster, toy, whatever it is. Number two on the list is Tendril. Released in the Inhumanoids line by Hasbro in 1986, Tendril is the thing of nightmares. It bears a striking resemblance to Cthulhu or any number of one of H.P. Lovecraft's awesome monsters. Tendril was another massive monster toy. And kind of like the Rancor, he could hold people in his tendril grasps. The Inhumanoids were a group of apocalyptic beasts that erupted from the center of the Earth. Led by Meltar, Tendril was a mindless beast for all intensive purposes that just destroyed anything in its path. With a crack of his tentacled hand, he could bring down buildings. He could stomp cars with his massive feet. There was no stopping him. Unfortunately, I never had any of the humanoids toys, but I was in love with them. I loved the cartoon when I was able to catch it, and I even picked up some of the Marvel comics as a kid. I just loved it. It was great imagery, great monsters. It was a great story. Unfortunately, it did not last long. And that is so unfortunate because it could have been huge. I mean, monster toys, monster toys should have been a lot more popular than they ended up being. Number three on the list is Battle Bones from Masters of the Universe. Released from Mattel in 1985, Battle Bones, for all intents and purposes, was the Masters of the Universe version of G.I. Joe's APC. 
maybe lacking the armor of an APC, Battle Bones was a place where you could carry your figures, carry their weapons in its mouth, and just have a cool carrying case, if you will, for your Masters of the Universe figures. What a great aesthetic to have. A giant skeletal dinosaur. I mean, one moment, it could be a ferocious beast. The next moment, you're packing up your He-Man figures and going to Grandma's with it. I honestly don't have a story to why I never got it or how it never came into my possession, but I always wanted one. I mean, I think maybe the practicality sense to my parents because I really didn't have that many Masters of the Universe figures, so why have a carrying case for something I didn't have that many of? Either way, this is another toy that I would proudly display on my shelf, and if my hands are tied, then I'd have to buy more figures just to put on it. Number four on the list is the Mad Scientist Monster Lab. There was only one reason I wanted this thing, and that is to have skeletal monster pieces. What this lab was, you got, as I said, skeletal monster pieces. You would put... I guess it's kind of like a Play-Doh substance around the bones to make a cool monster. You would then drop said monster into a vat of spooky acid stuff and it would eat away its flesh and only leave the bones. All I really wanted were the bones. They were awesome. I mean, the commercial alone sold me. This image alone conjures up so many memories of how much I wanted this. It was released by Mattel in 1987, and maybe my parents thought at 11 I may have been a little too old for something like this, but it's science. You never outgrow science. Number five on the list, I'm kind of cheating because it's not a toy, but this is a Halloween episode, and this is a costume yeah, we'll go with costume, that I always wanted. I remember seeing the commercials for these and just being obsessed with them. They seemed so cool. I mean, I think probably at the time you were viewed as a dork for wearing them, but look who you're talking to here, dork number one. But that is the Kooky Spooks. First released in 1979, these giant inflatable hats, heads, things you would put on top of your head and wear your typical Halloween plastic smock thing. It also came with face paint so you could have your face match the thing on your head. There were a lot of great designs that whenever I see them they instantly take me back to that time in my life of seeing those commercials. One of my favorites is a skull with a candle on top. I mean, they could have just ended it with a skull, but they put a candle on top. Of course you didn't light it up, because the whole thing about Kooky Spooks was for safety. That you weren't wearing a mask to cover your face to, you know, that you're blinded and walk into traffic or anything. These were on your head, your face was clear, you could see danger averted. You were safe and secure to go home and eat your candy. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to throw the Kooky Spooks commercial in. This year, there'll be goblins and bats, spacemen and cats. The Kooky Spooks are coming! Bonehead, scary spider, owly owl! Yes, the Kooky Spooks are here. The scary ready-made Halloween costumes that are worn on top of the head. And each kit comes with matching makeup instead of a mask that covers the face. Plus poncho and safety tape. Kooky Spook Costume Kits. Nine zany characters to choose from. I mean, that's awesome. That is a little slice of a time we'll never get back. Something like that now... No one would make that nowadays. I mean, they do have inflatable things, but nothing this beautiful as... I mean, look at these designs. I mean, this commercial, 
this is a time period that we'll never see again. It is awesome. I mean, these designs are, as the name says, kooky. I mean, they're weird, and they're odd, and it just harkens back to a time in our childhoods that, sadly, we'll never get back. But, thankfully, we have commercials like this to watch and relive the experience. Anyway, this has just been five things I wish I had as a kid, but, of course, never got. As always, I feel like I should add that I had an okay childhood. I'm glad I wasn't spoiled and got everything I wanted, because... Who knows what kind of jerk I could have ended up being. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them, and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new here, and you enjoyed this episode, or any of these other ones that are down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell, you'll be notified whenever there's a new episode. So, until next time, keep being rad, and stay dorky.